Um, good to see everyone. Thanks for joining our Hardy Lunch and Learn today. I'm Tyler Price, Assistant Commissioner here at the Heart. Um, you know, a great way to to kind of connect and and, and uh, network and and learn some new things to hopefully help your campuses. So I'm really excited to have William Penn University leadership on our call today to to kind of um, lead our lead our monthly call today. So we have uh, Nick Rule, the Director of Athletics at William Penn University. And we also have Bailey Rhymes. She is the uh, assistant or director of athletic facilities and events. So um, both do a great job. I want to say they helped host eight, maybe nine heart championships last year and just did an outstanding job from multiple different facilities and, and things like that. So um, just a perfect group to, to share in our theme today, which is creating a big time feel for the game day experience. So Nick, Bailey, thanks so much for being here. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Tyler. Um, really appreciate all the work that you do. And I got to give Bailey a little bit of a shout out at the start because we just changed her title yesterday to assistant AD for event and facility, uh, okay. event and events and facilities. I still got to get the title right. Uh, but uh, she's she's been um, uh, she's done a great job and, and you'll get into that. She's going to take a, a, the second half of what we're talking about here today. So I, I just want to kind of set things up with just talking to you about, you know, where we were at. Um, where we wanted to be and kind of how we got there to where we are today. Um, when our administrative team took over just almost seven years ago, um, you know, we had never hosted a national tournament uh, game. We, we had really no process in place um, for hosting, uh, you know, even conference events. Um, our, our game days were very, uh, you know, just everyone showed up and you just had a game. There wasn't necessarily some additional glitz and glam to it. And so what we talked about is we wanted to have kind of a vision for what we call an athletic operations team. But um, from the onset, you know, we wanted to create a big time feel, uh, not only for student athletes, obviously that is number one, but we wanted a big time feel for um, our staffs, visiting team, home team, but also officials. Um, and, and also to solve a staffing need with the idea that we were gonna deliver anyone that came to our campus you know, an Iowa nice type welcome um, to our visiting teams, fans, um, officials, and, and you know, and obviously, you know, a level of professionalism that our student athletes uh, felt uh, elevated, you know, felt them making, feeling special at home. So, you know, we started as just a really small group seven years ago, um, one GA, myself, and an intern. Uh, and what we realized when we were going through this is that, you know, we needed to build out a team if we wanted to have you know, themed events at every home game, intentional reach out, I mean, a communication strategy. And then when it came to to game day, really delivering on an expectation of making people feel welcome. And so from that team grew just this this consistent team of uh, from athletic operations of a few GAs. Um, and then we re repurposed two positions, uh, full time positions that were just running our activity center and and, you know, added GA spots, but then uh, made it a full-time position for what Bailey does today um, as she's evolved on um, overseeing events and, and the facility. Um, but we, what we really needed to do is we needed to have a team in place uh, that with their sole purpose or understanding was to deliver great experience in our facility and all of our game days. And so over the seven years, we've expanded to where we now have a team of, you know, like it's between four and five graduate assistants right now. We have three interns, but we have up to eight student interns and, and where they're really focusing on that game day, that preparation. Um, and what we realized is that in order for us to deliver this high level experience, we had to prepare better. Um, and we had to prepare more often and we had to prepare farther into the future. And from that preparation, we needed to communicate the same way and be intentional about it. And um, we wanted every single one of uh, everyone coming to our venue to know exactly what to expect when they show up, whether it's where to park, where it's, you know, what their locker room is. Everyone needed to be greeted, welcome, like, um, administrators need to be talking to coaches so they understand if there's a problem with fans or something like that they're not you know they don't feel like they're on an island and don't know who to talk to um so it's very strategic along the way which uh, which bailey will show you so um we're we're happy with where things have gone with it because we've been able to copy and really paste this model into communications and creative content and now marketing um so much of what we do uh with the game day and the marketing the communications and creative content piece with videos and such um you know, we operate a pretty lean staff here. We have one full-time SID. Uh, you know, we have three full-time administrators here uh, within the athletic department, but uh, Alicia Rabideau and I are the only ones that really oversee the entire department. Bailey has a specific um, focus on it. 
and her area. And then beyond that, we staff it with a lot of students. And I think the one thing that it, as Bailey gets into things here in a second, we'll turn it over to her. Uh, the way we've kind of made this whole thing work is that everyone feels like they're a part of something really cool on the team. So it's not just a work study. It's like game day specialist or, you know, we're giving titles that are super cool that like that, that motivate them and make them want to be a part of the team. Cause we also know that we might be competing with the business office for the same work study students or college job students. And so we want people that really want to be involved in something, but you know, young people nowadays want to be involved in something really cool. And so we wanted to make this team like the cool team as well, the team that everyone wants to be a part of. And you know, there, there's many cases throughout the year that we just don't have enough positions and for the amount of people that want to be a part of our game day team. So um, that's a pretty big picture overview on, on how we got started and where we're at and then, you know, and where we want to be. And, you know, we've been able to host a lot of championships and such, and, and we want to do a lot of different things. And now we're starting a marketing component, which we'll get into as well, but I'll turn it over to Bailey and she can kind of show you from, you know, point A to, to the very end, you know, um, what goes through when we plan a game day um, at, or, or some type of an event. So I'll turn it over to Bailey. Yep. Thank awesome. you, Nick. Thanks, Nick, for kind of setting that up for me. So as Nick said, we're huge on the communication aspect when it comes to whether it's our fans, um, our student athletes, our coaches, um, and the visiting teams as well. And so with that staff, we've really been able to break things down into really strategic roles and responsibilities for each person. So I'll go ahead and share my screen here so I can give you guys the breakdown. Can everyone see that? Awesome. Yep. So when our graduate assistants come on campus, I meet with them almost immediately. We kind of walk through a little bit of what we have to handle as an operational team and facilities team. And then we talk a little bit about, you know, what are their interests? What do they believe that, you know, they need more experience in? Um, what sports have they done already that they feel comfortable with and which ones do they want to learn? Um, and so those those meetings are fundamental for what we are able to accomplish throughout the season, just because of that first and basic foundation for what they want to do. So I have right here all of our different graduate assistants, and then we also have um, a scholarship student as well who acts as a graduate assistant, um, really breaks it down. So they all have one sport at a minimum per season. So spring, winter, fall, um, they all have one sport that they'll oversee. I'll use Leah, for example, here. So her fall sport would be uh, women's volleyball and then going into crossover season uh, wrestling and then men's volleyball and softball. So she would be um, the lead for those sports. So that would mean that her responsibilities are to make sure that the officials are communicated with ahead of game time, that they're uh, receiving a clock protocol of what's going to happen before tip off. Um, and then also making sure that the visiting teams are communicated with. Have they, do they know where they're supposed to park? Do they know what time they're arriving? Can we, we'll make sure that we're there to meet them. Um, their responsibility is also to make sure that we have the event staffed. Um, do we have ball people? Do we have the scoreboard taken care of? Ticket takers, concessions, um, our team store as well. Those are really their major uh, responsibilities for game day. And then also set up and breakdown. Um, we all work really hard throughout the day. And as you know, a setup and breakdown can take a lot of time. So making sure that that's something that they feel comfortable with doing as well, and that they understand that they're looking for the little details and everything they do to put on a first class event. Beyond their sport oversight, they also have tasks and duties. And those are really the things that we have to get accomplished um, as a department, you know, making sure that schedules are taken care of for our teams. Do they have practices scheduled? Do they have meeting spaces scheduled? Um, managing our inventories. Um, do we have enough shirts to sell in the team store? Do we have pizza to sell on game day? Um, and then really all sorts of things go into that as well. So making sure our workstay is handled from a time card standpoint, are they getting paid? Um, are we working with our sport management program here on campus to make sure that we have interns um, and taking care of their credit hours as well? You know, are we being active on social media? Um, what posts are going out? How are we being intentional with driving attendance? Are those different posts, one for student athletes or students and one that is going more towards the community? Uh, those are very intentional efforts that are made from our staff standpoint. Another big thing that we've evolved in in the last few years is the facility side of things as well. Uh, we've taught our graduate assistants how to do turf management. 
You know, what happens if there's a, a seam up on the turf? Okay, you got to go do this, this, and that. Um, or what happens if something's um, broken? Okay, you need to go take care of this, this, and this. Um, really taking a lot of stress off of our administrative team from that standpoint and really teaching our graduate assistants to identify problems and finding solutions in a quick um, and an efficient manner. Another big thing, go ahead, Nick. Uh, could, I mean, and I, you might get to this, but I think, you know, um, you know, let's show them how we empower our um, uh, graduate assistants to, um, with, through teams, how we're showing them, yeah. you know, documenting the, the management of things. Because I think one of the things as you go through this, and I've presented on this a few different times um, over the years, uh, when it comes to um, some conventions and such, one of the, the pieces of feedback I always get is, gosh, that just seems like so much that you're putting on people. And how do you monitor it all like through one person? So before Bailey, it was me. Um, and then we hired Bailey and Bailey kind of, we did it together. Now Bailey's doing it on her own. And so um, we use Teams and and Microsoft Planner and Teams to to for every single game day. And I think it's important for, you know, Bailey to you to show them how that whole thing works. Of course, I'll jump over to that right here as well as I finish off duties and, and roles. So another big thing that we've added here recently is our promotions and special events, um, making sure that we're communicating on those in an effective manner, like Nick said, through teams. So I'll take you guys over to um, what we're doing right now with men's soccer nationals, which is actually taking place as we speak, uh, teams are practicing. Can everyone see my screen? Awesome. So going into an event, we do these uh, task lists pretty much. So everything that needs to be done is handled right here. Um, and it's assigned to specific people with deadlines. So I'll use this for example. So with the NAI national championship, making sure that every little thing was kind of taken care of and assigned. So tickets need to be posted. Our graduate assistant who, over, who oversees tickets was automatically assigned to that task with a deadline. And at that point, I'm able to monitor this from a larger scope by being notified when the task is in progress, um, just by changing it right here, and also when it's been completed. Um, and any sort of notes can be added into this area, comments if they have questions, which are automatically just sent over to me that I can answer in a pretty quick manner. So it is 100% Nick, as you said, there is you know, what seems to be a lot to monitor, but when you break it down into tasks and deadline items like this, it really becomes a lot more simplistic. And it also makes sure that your graduate assistants understand what they're supposed to be accomplishing on a day-to-day -day basis and understanding when it's supposed to be done and the expectations that are with it. Well, and not just graduate assistants, uh, because not everyone has graduate assistants. It's it's the interns, it's the student workers, um, it's the athletic director uh, who may be behind on something, and you can softly push on them <laughs> that uh, that needs to be done because um, there's a task list on there that's due. Uh, so it it it's not just for graduate assistants. But I think the one thing is it empowers them to have some type of management and operational function to allow them to kind of move forward on things. So. Yes, it's also really nice to be utilizing this because there's a files option up here and I'll get into this in just a minute on how we run each game day specifically. But you're able to share documents and edit them all together as a group so you can see who was the last one to edit them, who put them in, and you're able to quickly um, be able to communicate and share documents between one another so that everyone is on the same page. One of the, some of those documents that you'd find, like I talked about with our prior communication, I'll use our football one, for example, is a game day timeline. Uh, these timelines are created for every single one of our sporting events. And really the goal of this is for it to be a one-stop shop for anybody that needs to know what is going on on game day, whether it's an administrator, whether it's a student assistant, an intern, a work study, whatever it may be, they can grab this document and know exactly what's going on. So where are we at during the game? Okay, it's noon. That means the game balls need to make sure that they're in the official's locker room. Great. Anyone that picks this document up will be able to identify that. Um, it's also going to have your clock protocol on it. Um, what needs to be happening leading up to game time? Are we running on schedule? If not, what do we need to do to get around that? 
It's going to have your important staff information. Who are your game changers on game day from a operational standpoint of the game? At football, this is going to be your chain gang, your ball people, and your scoreboard uh, crew upstairs. Having their information front and center if there's a problem, cell phone numbers so that you can communicate with them in a quick manner is huge for us. Where are they? What's going on? That kind of thing um, really easily can be found on this document as well. And then from an administrative standpoint, um, and really whoever it is that's assisting you on game day, the area of oversight, um, like you said before, you pick up this document, what is your role? What is their role? Um, what is their responsibilities? This is where that area of oversight really comes into play. Okay, Kevin shows up on game day. He needs to know what he's doing. He automatically knows he's handling the South Gate area. And if um, Nick shows up on game day, he hasn't seen this timeline yet, or he hasn't been briefed, he can grab this and immediately know who's where and who he needs to communicate if he sees an issue in a specific area, maybe parking. Um, he can very quickly find that information. And then also just a brief rundown of what's going on during the game. So this one would have been our homecoming game. So who's in the hospitality suite? What is our promotion? Um, is there things that we need to know that are being recognized? And is there a giveaway so that if someone gets asked a question by a fan, everyone should be able to answer that question. Um, we aren't looking for the specialist in that area, um, radioing them, calling them, trying to find an answer. You have every answer that you could potentially need right here on this document. And I, I'll add one thing to this is that that we've done in the last few years is that, you know, we all know that um, fan behavior and and sometimes coaches and student athletes and, you know, just things are filled just to be a little bit um, different and not a very good way. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we felt is that uh, it's really important for, you know, the the head of the program, whoever is being here to know who we are. And um, but in the same respect, it's important for us to know who they are. I mean, we all have so many sports. So coaches come through. And so we've added pictures. So you know, I know that that's the head coach, you know, sometimes, yeah, you know, many times I know who they are, but um, our graduate assistants may not, or Bailey may not, it might be our first time meeting those coaches and just introducing ourselves. And then we also have done that with officials too. Um, you know, we take it just from what ref quest and just, and, and put it in there. And, and, and just so we know who, who can we expect that day? So our person that's in the South gate where our officials come in, um, they know when someone shows up, they can put a face to a name. And it's not only that, it's, it's not just a face so that we can greet them. Brad, it's nice to see you. And it's like, you know, that kind of that Iowa nice feel. Um, so they're like, gosh, how did you know my name? Well, they may not know that we have the pictures in their name, but it's just doing that ever extra level of um, intentionality with making people feel welcome. We'll do the same thing with our, you know, coaches uh, that have come, you know, um, you know, just, you know, like I've got grandies here when they played football here, just coach Woodley. It's great to see you, you know, uh, is there anything we can do to help? Um, and then also if there's, and specifically with like basketball and soccer, you know, if, if there's, if there's an issue, um, you know, what we've learned is that officials don't like with dealing with anything that's not on the field. And sometimes they feel like they're put in a position where they need to de deal with things that are not on the field. Um, they really appreciate administration dealing with stuff that's not on the field before they even know about it. Um, but sometimes you can't hear what's going on and such. So you could have a coach say, you know, Hey, Bailey, I mean, you're the administrator today. And cause she introduced herself there's something going on over there. They're saying something to my players and then Bailey can immediately go and address it. So where it never gets to the officials and hopefully we had diffuse a situation that gets out of control. For sure. And obviously we're using a football um, timeline here as an example, but this is something we do for every single sport. I'll use volleyball. For example, we have the exact same setup and breakdown as we would for football. Um, so it's not just a, a football thing. We're able to, you know, take what we have on a really large scale, like maybe a football game and break it down into a little bit smaller where there's only two officials or maybe there's four zones versus eight zones. Um, you're able to do it for any and every sport under the sun, really. And then very similar setup where your major um, employees at that day are going to be right down that second sheet so you can quickly answer any questions needed. Um, while we're on football, I'll go ahead and share with you guys what we do from an entertainment standpoint as well um, as we're on timelines here. So this is pretty much a breakdown of everything that would happen leading up to kickoff of a football game that would involve our athletic communications team. This has been a huge asset to us this year. 
um, from making sure that we're on time, that we're communicating, that everyone that will be playing a part in that game understands exactly what is happening. Um, and so we meet with athletic communications on a Monday before a football game and also following up with them on a Friday where we do a run through of this timeline to make sure that it actually works. So we would meet every Friday before game day and we would start with the clock at 29 minutes as soon as PA reads really begin. And we would go through the scoreboard time or clock time and do every single one of these items. Make sure that our PA reads not too long, um, that we only allotted 45 seconds for it and it actually needs a minute and a half. Um, making sure that we are staying on top of everything from a get-go. It's also color-coded really easily so that if you're only doing PA, you don't really need to focus too much on the other things. You need to know exactly when you need to start as a PA read. So your PA reads, your music person, your band, um, they're all color-coded differently to make sure that they're very easily um, recognizable when you pick up a sheet. This and Bailey, awesome. if, I could jump, if I could jump in here real quick, um, Bailey's going through the process side of things, which is very, very valuable. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just briefly touch on the big picture side of this. Um, there are so many difficulties at times when it comes to, you know, we're all wearing so many different hats and we don't have enough people. Um, I think part of the way to deliver a higher level game day experience is that you, you plan what you can plan for. Um, and then you go ahead and, uh, and then you have more time and intellectual space to deal with some of the other things of being creative. The other part to it in regard to this football situation, this actually developed out of a problem that we were trying to solve. You had band, you had cheer and dance, you had operations, you had communications. And there were times, especially on major events like homecoming, we felt like we were operating in four different silos. Um, and so this was from a big picture standpoint, this gets everyone in the room talking and specifically this is to football. And so everyone goes into a game day and it's uh, there. Everyone understands what the plan is. Um, we even bought a headset for cheer and dance, a headset for uh, whoever's up in the uh, uh, the booth where communications and the video board and all, is, all that is at. Um, the band has headset as well. So we had a situation at one point where someone was playing, the music was playing over the band. And if, and if you're a band person and you're a band parent there, that's just there to listen to band doesn't care what happens at the football game. You know, that's offensive. And, and, and we didn't, we didn't want that to happen anymore, even though it wasn't intentional um, because people that didn't necessarily understand that our, you know, they thought our intentions were just to play music. And so um, it, it's helped from a cultural standpoint together, getting people to work together and, and breaking down silos between different departments. And um, it's probably been one of the more impactful things we've done, uh, not necessarily running through the game day and all that, but it's just getting people working together. And the other part, if you have a video board, and you want to maximize graphics or like hype videos and things like that, like this is a pretty big deal to be able to do. And so that was the other piece to it is that ha us adding a video board kind of, you know, forced us to, you know, we've got some added difficulties um, that, that have a high um, ROI, uh, but we just need to um, figure out how that, how that works and get everyone working together. For sure. And to elaborate off of what Nick said as well, um, that's where a lot of this color coding came into place. We were working with so many different, um, I guess you could say, entities that are were so used to focusing on what they did solely that breaking this down into one sheet and creating these this code really helped everyone involved. And I know speaking with our director of band, it, it has made him feel so much more included and he feels more valued out of it, which was worth every single moment of, having, of creating this entertainment plan if that's how he you know, interprets it now. And even more important than that, his students felt valued, um, who are the same paying students as our student athletes. Correct. Um, and that kind of even further go to, goes into what we're talking about with band is making sure that we weren't playing over each other. Um, that was an issue we had. Um, everyone really wasn't able to communicate. We had our music person up in the booth and we had our band out in the stands. And so really breaking everything down into a sheet that everyone could read, everyone could understand and work off of has been huge. And like Nick said, with the headsets, if we need a change on the fly, band was able to immediately communicate with us. We were able to communicate with band and cheer. And so not everyone was looking around trying to take off, you know, uh, cues off of people's body language at that point. And I think our approach on this just comes down to a core principle within our department. You know, anytime there's a lack of communication, negativity fills in. So how do we make sure that we, you know, that's a John Gordon principle, you know, and so how do we make sure that we, are doing our best to uh, over communicate. And so a lot of these things, there's emails that go before to 
um, to teams and to officials just with some similar planning and such. But Bailey, I, I, I mean, we have a few people on here. I know there's a question in chat that why don't we open it up right now? Just a few questions because because as we're a little bit past the midpoint here um, and what we're talking about, are there any questions um, so we don't go down a rabbit hole that doesn't necessarily make sense to you? And we might be able to curtail a little bit of the rest of the discussion to what, what's valuable to um, the, those of you that are on. Bailey, just like a technology question for you. I know the headsets are very important for communication thing. Is there a certain brand you use that you recommend um, that works well for you guys? Um, honestly, I can't remember the name off the brand on my or the brand name right off the top of my mm -hmm. head. Um, but for inner communication, we use uh, Motorola walkies. And then I want the I want to say the headset is just you know your standard referee or your sideline headset that visiting you know teams use for football or in your home teams use for football. I mean, we just bought those too, so we could send that information out as well. I think that would be good. I think yeah. Yeah, I think that's something that some schools may not use. And I know I worked at two schools in the heart. We didn't have that, and I think that would have been a game changer. So, well, and and I was concerned about cost mm -hmm. on it initially, um, and in fact, some of the initial requests that we had were just too expensive and so as we um you know we worked with our is team to kind of figure out what's going to work with radio frequencies and such and i think what we have um is really really good and i think it was a few hundred dollars um wasn't it bailey yep yeah okay cool. are there other questions i know i think we had a question about if we would share information from yeah bridget yeah awesome I do have yeah. a question. Can you yeah. hear me? Yeah. Um, the GAs that you refer to, Bailey, that you assign specific sports to manage game day ops, are those all GAs that are the athletics department GAs or are those GAs that are involved in other sports and they're just utilizing them in other ways? So, so I'll, I'll take this real quick, Bailey. Um, so a really good question where we are at today um that uh for the most part they're assigned to just the operations area however that's not where we were at um and i didn't explain that very well at the start where we started is that we had um when when i talked about how i i was basically me a ga and an intern um that graduate assistant was also with softball and then we had a graduate assistant this is with volleyball that they kind of switched off as we demonstrated some of the value of being able to do this and as students and our student surveys um, started to uh, reply back that part of the reason why they were having a good experience at William Penn was because of game day. Then we were able to um, demonstrate that maybe uh, the resources to get a few other graduate assistants that are strictly dedicated to operations might make a lot of sense. So, so it started with mixed and today it is um, very in one area, but we also had, again, a big activity center where we had two full-time people and we were able to, you know, eliminate a full-time position and add graduate assistance in order to, um, you know, help manage the building as well. Did that answer your question? Yes, it did. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions out there before Bailey can show you some of our last, you know, some of the final approaches that we have? I'm going to go into special events and promotions here next, yeah. too. Go ahead, baby. All right. So similar to what we talked about with our graduate assistants, there we actually have Kyle Huffman, who's one of our scholarship students who I worked very closely with um, from a promotional standpoint. We are always trying to drive attendance um, to our games, you know, make them a great atmosphere and a place that people want to go to. And so Kyle and I started working really closely these past few years um, on creating a promotion schedule um, for the entire year. We do this a little bit over the summer and early into the fall. Um, but our goal is to make sure we have everything done ahead of time so that we can get it out to coaches so they can help, you know, push these promotions. Um, we also want to get in communication with ASA and SA, um, SGA and ASA, who work really well with us as well about, you know, sponsoring some of these promotions so it's not solely coming out of uh, our budgets. So what we do is we create an Excel sheet um, with every single home game on it, what day it's taking place, what sport, what time. Um, and then we do a run through of what are what are we wanting to have this special event? What can we do that night? Is there, you know, a national day taking place that we can kind of feed off of a little bit? 
Um, and then we kind of break down, okay, um, it's taco Tuesday. We should, we could give away tacos. That'd be, you know, those kind of tie together. Um, or I use example of bark in the park. Um, so that's where we allow dogs, um, into our baseball and softball venues. Okay. Well, let's give away, uh, a dog bowl to the, uh, in a raffle for whoever brings a dog, um, things like that are really beneficial for us planning ahead of time. Because what we found is that if we're doing this before the season starts, there's so much chaos and things going on that it really just kind of falls to the wayside and we forget about what we should be doing at that point. Um, so our uh, promotion Bailey, team, and two things that I don't want to miss here. Number one, just for those of you that can maybe pitch to an athletic director or something like that, uh, don't miss the point to where we're now, you know, trying to recruit. Now it's not bringing in a ton of students. So, um, but you know, we have one right now and we scholarship that student just like an athlete under an athletic scholarship. And, um, you know, they're doing really good work. And, you know, in particular, Kyle, he's come way out of his shell. He was just a like, really quiet kid. And now he's just got a ton of confidence. And then and just so we don't lose that, our graduate assistants and, and those that have been through an internship program, we have a really high placement rate of them getting jobs, you know, full-time jobs right after they're done. We've had some at Drake University. We, we have two people working in the MLS. We've had someone work in the MLB. We've had someone work uh, in the NHL that was an intern. Um, and so, you know, there's a high school activities director now. So, um, you know, they, they're getting some pretty tangible experience. And then the second part is just making sure that everything's planned out throughout the year because she talked about ASA and SGA. Um, we we don't have the budget to to have all these uh, themed events and have the giveaways that we do. We just we just don't. Um, but if we had the plan ahead of time and we're presenting it ahead of time to these entities like SGA and ASA and other student organizations and you know the local hospital and such, um, and giving them a plan and inviting them to be a part of something that makes sense to them, then they can go through and look at the schedule and like I really like this night. Um, how can I be a part of this? Well, here's how. Um, we want to give this giveaway. Here's the cost of it. Is this something that you can help um, help with? And, and so that type of planning ahead of time has helped us be able to theme more events and give giveaways at more events um, and, and because we don't have the budget to do it all on our own. Great. Thank you, Nick. And like I was kind of running through with this spreadsheet, we're able to document all of this to manage the budget from that standpoint, and also understanding who we need to be communicating with a few weeks in advance leading up to the game. Um, okay, if this is being sponsored by ASA, we need to make sure that they know what's going on. They need to know that this is what they're doing and are they do, what plan they have and do they need our help. Um, we also kind of go even farther into this with special recognitions, uh, making sure that our community is driven together um, and we're really inviting people out for it. Um, you know, first pitches for baseball and softball, those are planned months in advance so that we can make sure that some of the most, um, you know, Influential people, some of our staff that we want to, you know, uh, pay recognition to are also invited to these events as well. So making sure they have plenty of time to plan for it. And then lastly on this um, is just some halftime games so that when we have something going on, like a cheer or dance team, like we had last night, that they know exactly how much time they have. We don't run overtime and then uh, making sure that we're communicating with them as well um, from that standpoint. And then from there, we're easily able to tie this all into our athletic operations team. Uh, we have it all broken down pretty easily. And then let's see if I can get it open here real quick. There it is. Um, really broken down into those same tasks and assignments that we had spoken about earlier, where we need to make sure that these, you know, sports are communicated with. What do we need for Hoops for Hunger? What do we need for Lily P's Holiday Bash? Um, and what's been taken care of from that standpoint. And we actually keep all of our games in here so that we can just restart those tasks when we do them again next year, because a lot of these events are our annual events. So you don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel every single time around. Nick, anything to add on our special events and promotions? No, I, the only thing I would share is that we, again, this is, you got to remember, this is a process that is seven years in. And, and so, um, you know, it wasn't this way three years ago. It wasn't this way four years ago. Um, and it's, it's a little bit more elaborate than even, you know, a year ago. So I don't want to sharing any of this to think, oh my gosh, this is too much to take on because this is not how we started. So, um, I think, 
what we're using this model again i talked about communications and creative content i mean we've got six uh i think six student interns within creative content that take pictures of every single game and videos and then feed that into our communications office so we can you know put together some cool videos and highlight videos and such um one person can't do all of that and so um we're learning that this generation if you know if they have a specialization that they think is going to benefit them long term um, and it feels and they feel like they're part of something very cool, um, they'll do a lot. They'll move mountains for you. Um, and and it's just communicating it as a big deal, because um, in a big scheme of things, it looks like it may not look like a big deal. So we're just getting another student. Well, it is a big deal. And what we're seeing is that it's a big deal because it's helping them get jobs and such. At the end of the day, you know, our, our purpose shouldn't be about just, you know, our sh purpose shouldn't be what we win. It should be whose lives we're changing. And so. Um, we're thinking we're creating a better experience. We've got work to do, obviously, on everything. Um, but we also think that we're providing some opportunities for people. And then I think the other thing that Bailey touched on briefly is that it's helped us develop a more comprehensive uh, and vertically integrated relationship with our faculty on the sports management side. So one of our graduate assistants actually kind of oversees the uh, class that is the um, field, experience. Uh, field experience class. And so we're getting kind of free help that are interested in sports management. Um, but we give them some impactful things to do as well. So we're saving money on work study. And so, uh, and they're just getting some of their hours. So it's been an approach that's kind of helped us in a number of different ways, um, building relationships. And to me, what I think, I love all that we're, what we're doing with it, but I think what one of the unintended consequences that came out of it was it just helped us build a better culture. Um, and, and, and that's a really big deal nowadays, obviously it's always been, but you know, people want to be, part of a big time feel. Is there anything specific that you'd like me to touch on, Nick? Uh, let's, I mean, let, let's go back to see if there's any more questions and then maybe wrap it up. Are, are there any other questions that anyone has? Yeah, um, I did promotionally, Bailey. Um, you know, you guys have created such a great game day environment. You know, you see it on the live video stream and, and social media and things like that, but you've done it with some really neat promotional events throughout the year, you know, to keep things creative and fresh and, you know, just bring new, new ways of, of bringing fans. Right. Um, talk about how you kind of came up with some of those ideas and, and, and all that good stuff. Yeah. So uh, we lean heavily on our graduate assistants and even our work studies and interns to bring us ideas. What do you want to see? Um, what would you think would be a really cool event that you'd want to go to? And then we find ways to make it happen. Um, you know, what's the cost? Can we scale it down a little bit? Can we scale it up a little bit? Um, a lot of those great events have come from our student athletes and our graduate assistants. Uh, for example, the graveyard game um, that came from one of our graduate assistants and, you know, wanting to find that special event for um, a women's volleyball game. We have a special event, um, like an annual special event for every single sport on campus. Um, we have Laxapalooza, Bark in the Park. Um, the list goes on and on and on. The toilet paper it's, Yeah, just, just specific to that sport. And I mean, I think we're still trying to find one or two others, but like, yeah, specific, that is not a carryover for something else. It's like that sport owns it and loves it and looks forward to it. Yeah, so the ideas really come from them. And then we collaborate um, in our weekly meetings and find a way to make it happen. What do we think would look cool? What would our coaches be interested in? We work a lot with the coaches to make sure that is something that they want. I mean, we're not going to give them a promotion that they want nothing to do with, of course. So working with them um, and then working with the student athletes too. Like a lot of the student athletes know us. So they'll come into our office and pitch ideas to us. They see us at every single one of their games. So they're pretty comfortable with doing that. Um, and then really build off of those ideas. And, and I'll jump in on that just with the, to add to it real quick. Part of our student survey student athlete survey has something like this in here is like, do you have an idea for a, a game day? We we do game day promotion. We do get some things from that, but I think what Bailey's talking about, and, and that I don't want it to be missed on that is that we're having creative marketing sessions. And so, you know, kind of my background is in marketing. It's like, you get everyone into a room, you, you set up, you know, some parameters and then you have just this creative session that makes people feel like they can, you know, really bring any idea to the table. And and then some of that is through hiring as well. You know, when we hire our graduate assistants, yeah, we have some William Penn alum that are part of it, but you know, we have a, a, a student, a graduate assistant from Liberty University and from Kansas. In the past, we've had Grand Canyon University. And so just making sure that we're, you know, you know, bringing them in as well and also using their knowledge because they have a different experience. Um, 
you know, we try to take the approach that even though we're insiders, we always try to think like an outsider. And so what outside information can we get that's going to help us understand what we aren't doing and what we can do better? Is that answer your question, Tyler? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Anything, any other questions at all? Well, I'll just close by, you know, just sharing that, you know, this this can be done on any campus. And, and you know, we are proud members of the Heart of America, and we will share anything with you. Um, we're not thinking this is propri proprietary information that we're not, that we don't want to share because, you know, we don't want others to do it. Like, I think it's important for, you know, all of us to have a great experience for our student athletes because we all need each other. And so if there's anything that we can do that, whether it's the timelines or anything like that, feel free to reach out to us and we'd be more than happy to share this information with you. Um, I mean, we're, we're part of the same conference. We're part of the same conference family. And so um, it's important to us to be able to, uh, if we can be a resource anywhere um, to do that. And I just know our athletic directors, uh, our you know, our BOG, we share a lot of information and so many of your ADs that are on here, you know, I talk to all the time and just, you know, we have great relationships. So we're, we're willing to share anything that makes sense that you're interested in. So um, don't hesitate to reach out. Yeah. Thanks for saying that, Nick, you know, this, this, this helps make the conference better, you know, this information and you guys being able to share this, we, we're very appreciative. So thank you. Um, yeah, I guess we'll, you know, we'll kind of wrap things up. Bailey and Nick, thank you so much for, for being here and, and uh, you know, sharing this information. So like I said, we're recording this. Um, I will, you know, edit a little bit at the beginning and things and, and put together a full video here and I'll send it out to the group. Bailey, if you wouldn't mind sending me, you know, those documents that Bridget um, requested and even anything else within the presentation, I'll also share that. Um, that would be great. Um, anything else from you guys? No, thanks for right. everyone's time and jumping on and yeah, you know, thanks to you guys in the conference offices for you know letting us uh, you know share something that we think works to to help everyone else if it if it makes sense to them. So we're just happy to be able to give some information if it helps. Oh, thank you. Had a couple updates I just wanted to share to the group. Um, this is Heart SID Appreciation Week, so uh, please you know continue to to show love to your SIDs. Um, we we sent some PA scripts and scripts for your broadcasters for home games for the week to your ADs and SIDs. So I um, would love to hear those on national broadcasts this weekend and uh, for, for NAI and, and anything else, any other heart games you have this week. Um, then we'll have a couple of more appreciation weeks as we get into the winter. So Heart Athletic Trainers Week will be January 21st through 27th. And then we will have our HASA Day of Caring, which is actually a full week, February 12th through 18th. So Remember, you know, you have one HASA member um, on your campus that, that works within our committee. So we have one athlete from each campus that, that encompasses our 13 member HASA committee. And so they're working hard to kind of come up with a day of caring uh, community service event that will be held on campus. So um, would love for you guys to reach out to them as they start prepping. You know, they really need support from the athletic department to, to put together a successful event. So um, again, that'll be February 12th through 18th. So just wanted to make sure you guys had those deadlines. And again, thanks so much for being here and, and best of luck to all of you as you host national events this week and, and heart events. Okay. And have a great Thanksgiving. Awesome. Thank thanks, you, Tyler. Tyler.